This question combines De Marvra's theorem with some of our older techniques for handling trigonometric equations that we need to solve. How did I know that I needed De Marvra's theorem for this question? Not just that the whole exercise is using this result, but also when you have a look at the question, uh, like if this question was presented to you in the middle of an exam, it doesn't have like a nice title over the top that tells you what you need to use. Uh, you can see here that there's these large uh, multiples, integer multiples of angles that you can see uh, in the right hand side of this result that I'm trying to prove and even though I could use just regular trigonometric expansions to deal with what these are, um, De Marvra's theorem allows me to get to them relatively efficiently using you know binomial expansions and all the rest that we can connect with our uh, complex number knowledge. So that's what sort of signals to me that I'm going to use De Marvra's theorem. I'm going to have to use it twice, one for the sine 5 theta term and then one for the sine 3 theta term. So there's going to be a fair bit of working here. Uh, it's one of those uh, long haul questions that we've seen uh, done before, so we better get stuck into it. Here's part A. By De Marvra's theorem, you should always quote De Marvra's theorem just like Pythagoras whenever you use it. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to quote it for uh, you know raising a complex number cos theta plus i sine theta to the power of 5. Now um, rather than put that result on the uh, left hand side, I'm going to put it on the right hand side cos theta plus i sine theta to the power of 5 because I'm going to have to expand this thing and it's going to become a little bit messy. That's the main amount of work I'm going to be doing on this. So then on the left hand side, I'm just going to have the result and nothing's going to happen to it. So it's just going to stay put. Okay, so this is what De Marvra's theorem tells me for n equals 5. Now I need to do the, the hard work of expanding here on the right hand side. Now when I think about the question, uh, you can see that everything in part A and part B it has to do with signs, right? Now that's what signals to you when you think about the polar form of a complex number that I'm going to be focused on the imaginary part. Um, the real part here is going to be sort of irrelevant to me. So what I'm going to do as I have in the past is when I expand this, I'm not just going to put all six terms of the this expansion just in, in a row. I'm actually going to put um, the real parts on one side and the imaginary parts on the other side so that just makes it easier for me uh, to separate them when I do my comparison. So what's our first term going to be? Well uh, it's going to be uh, cos 5 to the power of theta um, and then I add my next one, I'll put it a little further along because I'm going to need the space. Um, I'm going to have to have the binomial coefficient, um, how many powers of cos and how many powers of I sine uh, theta I'm going to have. So because I'm on the, uh, the fifth row of Pascal's triangle, uh, my next coefficient will be 5. I will have one fewer cos theta and I'll have one more I sine theta. And so you can clearly see this is what's going to give us the imaginary component there. What's my next one? Well I'm going to put it underneath here because I know in advance because my i's keep multiplying I'm going to get a real component for the next one. So the next binomial coefficient along is 10 so you get one fewer cos, uh, one extra i sine. I clearly did not move this far over enough, that's better. And then I'm going to add uh, the next one. So I'm going 1, 5, 10, I'm in the middle so 10 uh, cos squared theta I sine theta all cubed. Uh, I'm past halfway um, in my binomial expansion, so I'm back down to 5. Uh, I've got one cos left. I've now got uh, four of these. And then the last term, uh, the remaining binomial coefficient is just 1, and then it's going to be I sine theta to the power of 5. Okay. Now I'm about to do a comparison of the imaginary parts on the left and right hand side um, but before I do that I need to sort of clarify what's going on that, that these are indeed, you know it's not just because I can see them um, and I know in advance what these are going to expand out to be, I need to show that there's just a single factor of i out the front uh, which I can then do the comparison with. So. Even though I could simplify these guys too, I'm actually not going to worry about the real parts and simplifying them because it's just extra mental effort that I don't need to expend because I'm not going to compare the real parts of both sides. When I have a look at uh, these, these three terms uh, over on the right hand side, that's a really messy way to write, let's try that again. When I look at these three terms over here, what I want to do is just factor out the i so it's very clear that these are imaginary. So here comes the first one, it's just going to be i outside of uh, cos to the 4 theta and a single sine theta. Uh, what's the next one? Well let's have a look. I've got i cubed, so 
I squared out of that will become minus, um, and so this plus is gonna become a minus there, um, and then one lot of the i's is left over. So I'll factorize that i out, that leaves me with 10 cos squared theta, and then sine cubed. And then lastly down here, I've got i to the power of five, so i to the power of four is just one by definition. Um, and so that leaves you with one of the i's left over, so that's i sine to the five theta equals one, okay great. So what I've got now, you can clearly see, if I sort of drag this along, you can clearly see that these terms here are all imaginary. So um, I've got this part over here, uh, and so now I'm going to do my comparison of imaginary parts. So comparing the imaginary parts. Uh, what am I going to get? Well, on the left hand side, I've got sine 5 theta. And then on the right hand side, um, you can see I'm just going to um, have all of those terms that I circled in red just over here. Um, and so I'm just going to grab them. I'm just going to copy them down, except I don't need the eyes. So. That should do it. Uh, however, because I didn't get the i's, I didn't get the signs in between. So that's a minus and that's a plus. Okay, so here are the imaginary parts of the left-hand side and the right-hand side. Um, but you can see that in order to use this, when you have a look back at the original results, there, there are no cosines here, so I've got to get rid of all of these cosines somehow. Now, thankfully, because I've got lots of things being squared, I can use the Pythagorean identity, uh, sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equals one. Uh, in order to change all of these cos squareds out for sine squareds, I'm going to um, subtract that from both sides. So this result is what I'm going to use, uh, but I do notice that in fact, um, I don't just have a cos squared on the left hand side here, I also have a cos to the power of 4 uh, here. So uh, in order to use that, if I square the left hand side, I'd have to square the right hand side as well. So I'm going to use both of these results uh, and do this simplification. All right. What do we get? Well, in the first instance, I've got five times. Here's my substitution for cos to the four theta. I'm gonna use this. So it's gonna look like one minus sine squared theta squared, and then it's multiplied by sine theta. So that's what I'm getting from the first term. Um, I'll leave that on its own line because it's going to become quite messy in a second. Then I get this guy, 1 minus 10. Uh, let's see here. So this is 1 minus sine squared theta, and then it's multiplied by sine cubed theta. And then I think this plus sine to the 5 theta will fit onto this line just fine. Okay, so I have to do some expansion here and you do have to take care um, that you don't get any terms astray. So I'm going to have the 5 sine theta out the front from here and here, and now I've got to do the work of expanding this 1 minus sine squared squared. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, I've got 1 minus 2 sine squared, and then I'm going to add sine to the power of 4 theta. That looks okay. Um, and then uh, you can see here, I'm going to get on the next line, minus 10, uh, this sine cubed out the front is going to multiply by 1 minus sine squared. I'm going to do all my expansions in one hit. Okay, so far so good. Uh, what does this land us with? Well, let's take uh, these two sets of brackets here and expand both of them. Uh, taking care with my coefficients and my sines, 5 sine theta times 1 is just 5 sine theta. Minus 10 sine, looks like that's going to be cubed. And then I'm going to add 5 sine to the power of 5 theta. Okay, so far so good. We want to watch out here because there's a double negative that I'm going to have to expand. This first one is just multiplied by 1, so it's the same. And then I'm going to add 10 sine to the power of 5 theta. Again, that's where I'm getting this and this term from. Uh, and then you've got the uh, plus sine to the power of 5 theta hanging out on the end. Okay, things are tracky long okay. I've got to collect like terms, obviously, because now I've expanded everything out. So let's have a look. Uh, there seems to be uh, only this one solitary uh, sine theta term out the front, but then there's a whole bunch of other ones that can simplify. So if you have a look at this sine cubed term, uh, and then there's another sine cubed term, and then here come our sine to the power of five terms in here and here. All right, so. Let's have a go at this. Uh, five sine theta out the front. And then, uh, let's do this in red. Minus 10, minus 10, that looks like it's a minus 20. And then when you have a look at our sine to the power of five terms, uh, you can see I've got uh, five here, 10 there, and uh, one there along the end. So that looks like plus 16 sine to the power of five. 
Okay, how does everything look? Is it all checking out? Hmm. I'm looking at all my signs. Uh, I think I am, I think I'm happy with that. Okay, so that is our result for sine of five theta. Um, so that's good, that's progress. Um, you can see that if I go back to my original question, um, I've got sine of five theta, it's just in terms of sines. Um, this 16 and the sine to the power of five theta, that seems to have appeared over here, so that's that's promising, um, but I'm certainly not all the way there, right? You can see that I've, I've only dealt with this part of it um, and I haven't dealt with the sine three theta, okay?